Welcome back to Agile Apothecary channel. My name is Masha and on this channel we talk about everything Agile and a little bit about Japan. So I live and work in Japan and I've been working with a lot of companies here in Japan and one of the problems that I'm facing quite often is the inability to give and receive feedback. Feedback is perceived as something scary and people tend to take it personally, especially here, but I think this is a common problem everywhere. So today in this video, I'd like to talk to you about seven ways of giving feedback in a way that is productive, in a way that it does not hurt people and in a way that leads to personal growth. And later we will also talk about receiving feedback. So let's dive into the art of giving feedback. Number one, understand why you are giving feedback. What is your goal? What is your purpose? Are you trying to complain or scold the person or do you really genuinely want them to become a better person or better professional, better employee and you want them to grow? Because if your goal is just to complain or to have a fight, then this is not a feedback and I would recommend you to stop and maybe talk to a therapist first. But if you really want to help this person grow, you would want to keep the emotions aside and think about the way you are going to deliver your feedback in a way that is productive and helps a person to hear you out, to listen to you and to probably change their behavior in a way you want them to. And also I'd say that it's always better to deliver feedback as a friend, as someone who cares about the person, rather than taking a patronizing tone or trying to preach to the person even if you are much higher on the hierarchy than them or much older than them taking a friendly approach and friendly tone is usually much more efficient and works much better number two think that people always act out of the best intentions think about yourself when you make mistakes usually this is not because you wanted to be a bad person or to do something bad but because you did not know any better you were distracted you were emotional for certain reasons and you have clear explanations behind the things that you've done even if you hurt someone usually it's unintentional and because of the circumstances Usually, unless we are psychopaths, we want to be good. We try to be good. We try to do our best. But sometimes we are tired, sometimes we are distracted, sometimes we just don't have all the information or we get emotional and we make all sorts of mistakes. So when you are thinking of delivering feedback, even if something that this person has done makes you very upset, think that they had their reasons for doing what they've done and they did not mean it. They were acting out of their best intentions and doing the best that they could in their capacity at that moment. Number three, avoid sandwich. So some people actually prefer this way of delivering and receiving feedback. I'm not a big fan and I would not recommend doing that because it feels very unnatural, very fake and it usually doesn't help to deliver the right message to the person. So sandwich means that we jam some critical feedback between two pieces of positive feedback. We say something nice like you're always so diligent, then we say something that we really want to say for example, we talk about the mistake the person has made and then we finish it with another piece of positive feedback. So as a result, the message doesn't get delivered, the person feels like you are being fake, they don't necessarily believe the positive feedback that you give them and instead of listening to you, they might get confrontational, upset or irritated. I prefer being frank and getting to the point and I want people to talk to me in the same way. One important point here is that we still want to deliver positive feedback and the more the better. 
what I'm trying to tell you here is that we don't want to use positive feedback only when we want to camouflage our critical feedback with that. So deliver positive feedback when it's time for that, deliver critical feedback when it's time for that, but don't try to use positive feedback to hide your real, your critical feedback. Number four, be specific and use examples. So we want to avoid the word always, by all means. And the reason behind that is that because we don't want other person to get confrontational. The moment you say always, you are always so arrogant, you're always so loud, you're always late. The person would immediately think of the case when they were not late and they would get confrontational and they will try to defend themselves and you will get into a fight. As we discussed already, we don't want that. This is not our goal here. We want the person to improve their behavior. So instead of saying always, generalizing, be specific, use a specific case and explain what really happened and what was the impact of that action. For example, by being late to the meeting. Yesterday, you made me look bad in front of our client. And even if this is the 20th time this week that this happened, bring up one specific example and focus on that. And you can bring up more examples, but never generalize, never say always, because 100% of time, the other person will be confrontational about that. Number five, don't attribute qualities to people, don't call them names, but instead focus on specific behaviors. For the same reason, we don't want confrontation. And the moment you start calling names, saying that someone is lazy, disengaged, rude, loud, etc., you immediately get into this confrontational mode. Think about it. How would you feel if someone called you lazy? Maybe not so good, right? You would not want to have a nice conversation with the person who called you that, right? So we want to avoid this kind of confrontation and again, focus on specific actions. Not you are that, but you did that. And then focus on the impact once again that it had on you, on the organization and get into the problem solving mode. How could you fix it? How can we make it better so that we can reduce this impact? The part about impact is also very important, especially if you make it about yourself. Well, if you can, we don't want anything artificial. Let's say the truth, let's say how we really feel. But if, for example, you were embarrassed at the meeting yesterday, just say it. And what is yours is yours. Your feelings, your embarrassment is yours. And there is no space for other person here to get confrontational and start defending themselves. If you call them names, they will probably get ready for a fight. But if you say that after you did that, I felt that, they have no arguments against that. They can't take your embarrassment away from you after you felt it. So once again, try to avoid confrontation by all means and focus on how to make this feedback really productive. Number six, give them space and time. So people perceive feedback differently and some might take it very seriously and they would need some time to think, maybe to ask additional questions, to clarify. So you're not guaranteed that they will make you promises right away and start correcting their behavior, make amends, and this is okay. So you did your part, you did everything you could. Now it's up to the person to reflect, to think about what was said and come to some conclusions. And this might take some time, so give them time, give them space. Be around for them to ask you clarifying questions if they have any. Be there to provide support if they need it, but don't pressurize them into make any decisions or promises or take any actions right away. Number seven, 
give them advice and provide support for as long as it's welcomed. One thing that we really need to understand and internalize, and it's probably one of the hardest ideas out there, is that we can't change other people. Once again, it is impossible for us to change other people. Yes, we can impact them somehow, we can support them, we can help them, but it's not within our powers to change other people. So sometimes people would not want to act upon the feedback you've given, they will reject it and you need to be ready. And if they're willing to change, if they're willing to take what you're given to them, then please be there as long as you care about this person, be there to provide support and share some advice, how they could act differently next time when the same situation arises. So be there, but don't push your suggestions, your solutions, your advice onto them because it won't give you any results and once again it might lead to some confrontation to fight because when people are not willing to take advice it's better not to give them any. Giving feedback is very difficult especially if you're really trying to make it work and help other people to become better. So it is important to practice it and keep reflecting on things that you've said or things that you've done yourself to be conscious about your words and the impact that they have on other people. So if you feel like your feedback is not really working, people are not willing to listen or they get confrontational, you end up having fights or you get people really emotional, Reflect upon your style, reflect upon things that you've said that made them feel this way. So practice and try to get some feedback about your feedback and make it better. It's all about practice. Let me know if you have any know-hows on how to give feedback yourself, if you've ever been struggling with giving or receiving feedback, and don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video, and I will see you in the next video.